three, two, one. Uh, welcome to today's episode of Loud and Brown. Um, it's a privilege to have um, Sam Warns, yeah. Michael Jordan, fitting the MJs in the background as well. Um, the great Ali Lautiti. Thank you also for coming on board. Thank you for sparing at the time. How's things? Also? No, um, thanks, Ali, and also Loud and Loud and Brown, Brown eh? <laughs> uh, for having me on here. Yeah, no, um, yeah, no life's um, just as normal. I've got five kids, eh? So. Uh, pretty busy with that, and just working part time. Wife's at work, uh, especially with uh, school holidays. So yeah, it's probably same as every other parent. Eh? No, no, fair enough, fair enough. Us, uh, well, what you've been doing uh, in the background in terms of work nowadays? Um, so yeah, obviously I'm a, a part time um, stay home dad. Um, also work part time with the NZRL with the um, uh, well being and education um, space. Nice. Um, yeah, and I do a little coffee card on the side of my daughters when I can. So, yeah, uh, pretty much and just helping friends and families out, I guess. Yeah, cool. Well, with the, the coffee card, that, do you guys just park up, like, randomly? Or do you guys go to the games and set it up? No, nah, yeah, we... Um, it's funny how we start off, because it was, a, um, like, a childhood friend that he, he did, he's been doing it for, like, eight to ten years. Yep. And so the main reason why he got into it was more flexibility. And so that's the reason why I liked it. Yeah. I don't really like coffee. Yeah, yeah. My wife loves coffee, so <laughs> I just uh, try and make it, me and my daughters, but it was good too. It's it's a good opportunity for um, you know, me and my um, my daughters to do something. And yep. also kinda of teach them you know, around um, money and, you know, how to um, just in business and stuff in general. So I guess yeah. that was a that was probably yeah, but doing it together as a family that was massive. No, no, awesome, awesome. And that's pretty uh good of you as well Luz. um i think for i can speak on and as well as yourself uh most of our generation probably grew up not really knowing much about money management mm. as well and all financial literacy so now uh, that's good that you're teaching them the it, it's it's stuff like that as well or what's it called real life experience in terms yeah. of handling money like that they'll grow up and obviously learn more and if you if they want to tap into the business world man they'll be more equipped for it i guess Ah, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, not totally for that. Um, it was, and, and I think the other side of it was, um, you know, you get kids these. Oh, and I, I'm sure I was, I was, I was one like that too. You, you're always asking your parents for stuff and all that. You don't know where the money come from. You know, you think <laughs> money's on, grows on trees. Fair so enough. it was good to, for them to kind of do the hard yards and and know um, that you know if if you want something, you know, you got to work hard for it. Um, and then also, you know, um, in business. These things that you have to buy, you know, the more, um, yeah, as they say, you, you, you spend money to, to make money, I guess. Um, but also, yeah, um, you know, just kind of, um, it's more to be a better steward around the around money and what you have, I guess. Um, you can have a little, but still make the most of it. Yeah. Um, but have heaps and just waste it, I guess. So um, just around those areas, I guess. And yeah, especially what you said, just life, less, uh, life lessons. Nice, awesome, awesome. Um, and also, you just touched on briefly. So, uh, you have five kids. Uh, so, what are their what are their names and what are their ages? Yeah. Um, so I got five kids. Uh, four girls and one boy. My boy's the youngest. Yep. Uh, my oldest is Salome. She's sixteen. Going on sixteen. Ivana, fifteen. Then I got Elena. That's thirteen. Yep. See a That's um, seven this year. And then my um, AJ. That's He's the youngest. He's the boy. Yep. He's four this year. So yeah. Nice, nice. Happy that you got a boy. After uh, my wife is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my wife yeah. I, I I must say that all the credit goes to my wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She um, looked after my our kids for the last I don't know sixteen years or fifteen yep. years. So this year, oh this year, last year was the first time she went back to work. Oh, nice. Well, so yep. You know, I think she's kind of um, uh, and I think that goes with all professionals you know especially uh, those that are couples or huh. in, in marriage someone has to give in they all kind of um, sacrifice their um, their uh, occupation or their future you know for for the family and she, she did that for us me that's mean um, with your with your kids now that obviously that you're working part-time and you've got the cough cut so you, you've just been dedicating more time just spend with them since you've like Stepped away from footy. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's what we spoke about. Was um, 
Yeah, just being told about kids. Yeah. Because, um, you know, time goes fast. It, you know, it flies and then, um, yeah, and then they kind of grow, you know, they grow old and they leave leave the nest, I guess. And then, so just trying to make the most of it and hopefully we can um, you know, teach them a few things that when they do leave the nest, it, you know, they're kind of um, in, you know, in good stead to, to um, you know, go on to the real world, I guess. Yeah, no, awesome. No, thanks for that. Also, um, we'll just uh, delve a little bit into your past and obviously into your upbringing. Uh, I know you were born and bred in uh, Otar and you rep South Auckland hard. Um, tell us a little bit about that also. Um, what was it like growing up uh, in Otara? Yeah, um, yeah, I was, um, you know, my parents migrated from Samoa, you know, probably in the um, early 70s, maybe late 60s. Um, and, um, yeah, and then... I grew up in a in, in a house uh, full of girls, or oh, four sisters, so that was pretty crazy. Um, um, yeah, pretty much spent all my all my um, uh, what do you call it, childhood, um, you know, growing up in Otara. I went to schools in Otara, Flatbush Primary, Clover Park, where now it's Ki Aroha, and then ended up at this. Um, this high school called Otau, and that's how I, I know um, some of the boys that, you know, went to church, you know, Eric, the yeah. Timotil boys, um, and some of the other boys, but yeah, um, yeah, I love my um, childhood, you know, growing up in South Auckland, um, it, it's taught me, uh, taught me a lot, and it's, you know, it definitely made me the person who I am today, Yeah. Um, and you know, just like, it, you know, all of us, you know, we grew growing up in church, um, you know, the faith is, is um, installed into you. Um, and then, you know, culture, well, I think that plays a big part. And then, yeah, just having um, having that family oriented um, upbringing uh, plays a big part in, you know, who we are today. And I think it's put me in good stead for, um, for whatever I went through. Nice, nice, nice. And with your own family as well, how many kids or siblings do you have? Yeah, also I've got uh, uh, four sisters and I'm the only, yeah, I'm the boy. Oh, yeah. nice, bro, that's... <laughs> Crazy, eh? Yeah, bro, that's a mean ass coincidence, bro. Um, oh, no, nah, sweet. And so, are you the youngest as well? Nah, I'm um, the second oldest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, my sister's the oldest, then it's me, and then my, my three other sisters. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice, nah, that's awesome. Um, and with your parents, like, where, where were they from and stuff? So? Yeah, uh, my um, dad is, my dad and mum. Is from uh, Eva and Savai, yep. um, and then my dad's other side is Samaka, and then my mum's other side is um, Salonga, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So oh, not far. <laughs> not nah. far. Yeah. No, nah, that's sicky, man. And um, obviously, like you briefly brought it up, like, what was the influence of culture in your upbringing? Like, oh, I, I, maybe it's just me. Look from the outside, I see that. I always used to find that you've always like even on the field just real yeah. mild mannered and um just real like humble. Uh, I know you're like yeah that that is something to do with the upbringing as well. Like yeah no definitely um yeah. you know you you always taught to um you know to what do you call it? just to stay humble I guess you know mm. and I think especially growing up in our faith we uh, we try and um you know, give all the praise and glory to our heavenly Father. Yeah. He's given us everything, so it's not about us. So obviously, you know, we celebrate with our friends and our families, but um, overall, you know, the um, the glory goes back to him. So, and I think, and it's just in our culture too. My 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 dad is, um, he's you know he he's a quiet man. Yeah. Um, just more of a probably action person. So yeah, he doesn't really like me uh, boasting or you know. Um, Showing off, I guess, but yeah, it's just the way we, I was brought up, so nah, I was um, trying to shy away from the limelight, I guess. Yeah, no, nah, that's uh, sick. You was, um, what church did you guys grow up with? Yeah, so I, I grew up in, um, uh, yeah, funny one. So I grew up in a, in Otara, if I can say. Oh, true. Yeah, my grandmother went there, but my dad, he gave his life at AOG Church in Mangri. Oh, yeah. So we used to go back and forth, go to my grandmother's and then. Uh, to AEG and then I ended up yeah and then um, ended up in my mate's house oh mate's church sorry yeah. after school because we all our rugby team went there um, after the games so yeah, we yeah. ended up just yeah going to different churches I guess but just as long as my dad was always uh, big on as long as we you know we stay in the church yeah and, man 
you know, we are the God, I guess, in a way. Um, mm. You know, uh, it doesn't matter what um, denomination, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, that we know we have a relationship with them, I guess. Oh, that's sick, you man. Um, that's, that is pretty um, far, far thinking for your old man <laughs> as well. Like, um, but it's, that, that is so true, man. Like, uh, as long as you have a relationship, that's all that, mm. that matters. Um, no, nah, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing for uh, sharing that. Also, um, so when did like rugby or when did footy come into your life as a, as, as, as a kid? Yeah, it's um, yeah, you know when you're growing up in South Auckland. Yeah, uh, sports is everywhere. You know, it's everywhere. Yeah, you play that in the weekend in school, wherever. Um, but I started playing um, rugby for East Tamaki, probably I don't know under tens or whatever. Mm. And then I went to then I played a bit of league at Pekaranga. And I just pretty much did around South Auckland. I did Otara and then played for Otahu, uh, then Pepito Panthers, and then finished off in Mangor East. Oh, yeah, nice, so, nice. Yeah, it was just travelling with friends, I guess. We all, you know, kind of go um, gravitate to where our friends go. Yeah. And where the best barbecues are, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> best after match feeds. Yeah, yeah, hard out, eh? Nah, sick. He robbed the hawk, eh? So you <laughs> ripped Mangor East as well? Yeah, nah, yeah, yeah man. Definitely uh, South Auckland. Um, I don't know, all the teams, pretty much all the teams in South Auckland. Yeah. Probably Bar, Rewa, and who else? Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Who were some of the players like to, that you, like growing up, that was the ones to look out for? In the age group? Yeah, bro. Oh, man, there's quite a few, man. We had, yeah, yeah we had like, obviously, in our, in our age group, it was like Lizzie Vani Oh, um, Yeah, we had some. There was quite a few, man. Where was he from? He Southside or not? Yeah, he's from South Auckland. Oh, yeah, really? Mangry, yeah, yeah. Oh, shoot. He went to uh, De La Salle. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. Went to Mangry, Col- uh, Mangry Intermediate. Um, yeah, he pretty much did all the school in, in uh, Mangry, so nice. South Auckland, yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Just one of the, just a few of the names, but there's quite a few of them. Yeah, yeah. Nah, sick you, man. And um, what, how did you end up at Uru College, man? Uh, my sister went there, my older sister. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I think my cousins went there. And it was one of those ones I was definitely out of zone. So I had to, um, yeah. I think it was, I'm sure my mum used a cousin's address or something. One of those ones. <laughs> <laughs> the tricks. Uh, yeah, man. And then, uh, yeah, that's how I went. And then met all the boys. Yep. Um, had a bit of fun at school, played a bit of footy. And, um thought about work <laughs> school work <laughs> nah nah woman. but like back in the day like what was it like like getting around like in I know it was like in terms of like games and stuff or was it still the same like everyone carpool and yeah yeah man. nah yeah man we used to oh yeah heaps of stories man like yeah um you know sometimes it'll be someone's dad's man yeah 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 I remember early days um, our coach used to stand at the club rooms and just wait for, for someone that he knew <laughs> Yeah, what do you do today? And then, oh, no, I do nothing. Oh, you can, you can drop us off. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're a tattoo. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was one of those ones. I think, you know, it's one of those, um, that's why I, I enjoyed it because sports in general was just a community thing. So yeah. everyone gets behind. And mm. if it's not, um, you know, neighbours, it's someone that you, you're related to. They'll help you out, give you a ride and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Give you some boots. <laughs> no, no, sick. Yeah, yeah especially... Uh, well, back then as well, like not um, resources and finances were yeah weren't as I wouldn't say as easy as now, but we're we're, in, we're pretty hard to come yeah. by. So like, yeah, I, I remember like the hand me downs there as well. Uh, yeah, like, like the latest gears, you'd be like you know, you'd be happy as if you got any, but you're just happy to get anything. And just back then, you just you know. Like, I remember even back in primary, it was just the ball, bro. Like, yeah. you didn't even need boots. Nah, I don't, man. Yeah. I think, you, you know, you sometimes when you have nothing, oh, definitely when you have nothing, you, you appreciate anything. Anything, eh? yeah, man. And I think that's why, um, I think, you know, you're always grateful for anything you have. I think um, even, you kind of think of kids in the islands, family and, and relatives, and you know, kids just running around and smiling, you know? <laughs> yeah. And here we are, we... Think about oh man, we're eating noodles today. And we're a bit sad, but uh, <laughs> lovely. Oh. Rice was always the uh, the main um, the main food in our house. Oh, rice and chicken, eh? Yeah. Bako more, nah. Yeah, bro. Oh. Uh, Bako more. <laughs> Couple of ones, nah. Oh, sorry. We still have to. Is that my dad still thinks it's a good idea? Yeah, it's nice, man. Nah, bro. I was like, 
Pull up bottom, man. I still love it to know. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, bro. And yeah, fuck them all, it's not. Fuck them all, yep. Bro, that's all the old school things yeah. right there. I get you through it, you know? Bro, yeah, I have to. And, like, it was funny. Like, now it's easy to uh, to access to, like, be super, but yeah, back then it was nah. like, bro. It was yeah. always the mussies, eh? Yeah. After, after I use a whole um, two blocks of butter, two block, uh, blocks of butter on, on, on the mussies. So, like, what, um, what was those, um, what are the mussies called? Oh, the, um... Kevin Brady. Kevin Brady. Yeah. And the, he used and to the come with the, the tin. <laughs> yeah, well, no, those That's are, how you know someone had a fire of love. He was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you say, oh, bro, we mussies or mussies or sort of mussies? Everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. I remember, I know lies, but we used to talk about some of the food. My dad used to do that out of it. Straw <laughs> falawa. Like, yuck. Bro, my dad was one of those ones, he eh? yeah. didn't want to waste anything, man. No, bro, that dog, yeah. Like you said, when you come from nothing, everything, like you just <laughs> yeah, make yeah. the most of everything. Yeah, man. I think for us was, um, like, I remember, like, growing up, it was, like, maybe my dad always talks about it, like, whole week was just coco Ah, that, man. Bro, and I was like, coco and toast, coco and mussies, just coco Yeah, coco-lesa. anything, eh? Yeah, I was anything. The coco goes a long way, man. Bro, it's really hard. Do you have more? Yeah, uh, taco more with onions. The saucy, yeah. The saucy. With the rice. With nice. the rice. <laughs> that one, he just, oh, bro, he didn't even eat the more, he just eat the soy and the, the <laughs> yeah, rice. Yeah, I know, man. So, yeah, that used to be, that used to be a go-to, taco more. And just like, or even like a soup where it's like one packet of chicken. I know, man. I know, man. <laughs> you make it stretch, man. Yeah, that's it, man. That's probably like one of the main things I'm always appreciative of my parents is like, now like when we do have like got a okay job um family's doing like, yeah. you know, way better than like you just appreciate everything oh, even more and it's like some yeah sometimes i do find myself catch myself i'm like bro <laughs> like even when like you know when i'm eating i'm like so like, back oh, then yeah, like, hey. but you know, it's it's how far we've come i guess yeah exactly bro and my my parents never never like let us forget it as well like just how far we've come along and yeah, man, truly a blessing, all right. Um, now, nah, Seki, you also will um, I'll delve a bit into your footy career. Um, obviously, you're a dual, inter- a dual international way with playing for Kiwis so, yeah. as well as the tour. Um, you've kept over 100 uh, games for both the Warriors as well as Leeds Rhinos. Um, dominated the game here in Australia, New Zealand, as well as over there in England. Um, what what was it like? Obviously, firstly, like coming from high school and then being mm. put into the warrior system. What was that like? Oh, you know, it's it's a big shock, you know, mm. especially when you're a young person yeah. coming out of um, you know even South Auckland. Um, you know, it was a uh, you know you're just in awe of um, where you're at, the surroundings, but also the players that you're yeah, training with, and then yeah. you play against some some of the names. You're like, man, so you're just buzzing. It's just a you know, um, surreal kind of feeling, but yep. sometimes, yeah, you just have to try and make the most of it yep. because it goes real fast and then the whole career. But nah, I'm really, um, you know, blessed and really appreciate everything. Yeah, so God was good. Nah, I mean, also, um, straight out of well, what year did you finish high school? Um, 97. 97. It didn't take you that long until you debuted for the Warriors. Nah, yeah, then I went straight in 98 and then 98. Played, yeah, mean, bro. So, um, what was your like welcome to the NRL moment? Oh, it was um, oh probably the first game and then yeah, yeah. I think the second game I got smashed from you know, Harrigan and, and Angie Johns. Oh, it's like oh, the, you got, Newcastle. Uh, Newcastle, oh, yeah. Right. So yeah, massive football yeah. yeah. So yeah, well, after Steve that, you Simpson knew from, as well. Yeah, all well, those guys. Yep, yeah, yep, all the old guys. Yeah. After that, you knew that you know you were playing against men. So yeah, man. Nah. They, they they won it uh, not long. Yeah, they won it in two thousand and one. No, two two thousand or two thousand one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they were at their prime, or Andrew mm. Jones was. But they won it before that too. You know, yeah. I think it was that the final against Manly. Yeah, early nineties, yeah. 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 yeah, famous one. Ninety six was on that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what was your debut like when you ran out? Was it a home game? Well, nah, it was in North Sydney. North Sydney, North Sydney Oval against oh, yeah. uh, North Sydney. The Bears. Yeah, the Bears, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Jason nice. Taylor, all that, you know, yep. Billy Moore. Mm. Larson, oh. yeah, Gary Larson. Nah, I was, oh yeah, you just happened so fast, but yeah, same thing, man, you're like buzzing. Yeah. You're just looking at the lights and looking at, 
you know, who are the guys you're playing against? You're like, bro, fuck. Yeah, yeah, guys you're yeah. watching on TV, yeah. You're in awe, but also you're scared, so. Nah, it's just heaps of emotions going through you, and. Yeah. Yeah, after, you know, it's like, it goes just like that, so. Nah, but. Uh, yeah, you um. I think after a while, you, you have to pinch yourself, because you, you know, it's like, but was this a dream or what? But. Nah, man, um. It was just an awesome feeling, but um, really, you know, really good to not only re- represent my family, but also where I come from. Yeah, man. Um, you know, culture. It was, it was, and at the end of the day, you you represent them, but also hopefully you um, can inspire someone else to try and you know do the do what you you have done or be even better, definitely mm. better. So yeah. Nah, man, Seki. Um, what was it? Who did you guys play when you guys came for your back for your first home game? Nah, it was Newcastle this week. Oh, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how was that? Nah, that was, it was a good game. Did you run out to the drums? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, back then. The Rara drums, yeah. yeah. The drums, yeah. Bro, yeah, I remember, um, yeah, even when I was watching some of the highlights, like, from back then, like, just the the fa- the fan, the fan feel was oh, yeah. crazy. Like, nah, yeah. Like, everyone was involved. I guess they were a bit more, uh, a bit more laid back on, on, crowd interaction as well with the players and stuff like that but um, no the, the Warriors have a rich history of of not only player talent but having a good enough fan base as well a loyal yeah. fan base man so I think that's the difference now um, yeah, social media is massive um, um, yeah it's sucks man everyone knows your you know your stuff eh? yeah yeah uh, so I think back then it was, it was good like you know um, social media wasn't massive mm. So, uh, but now, nah, but now, that's why I really feel for our young ones, our young ones today, especially with social media. You know, it definitely could be an awesome thing, mm. and definitely could be a downfall for for our players. But um, at the end of the day, it's funny because people blame it on social media. But is it social media or is it the person? Yeah, yeah. You know nah, what I mean, so yeah. Nah, sweet man. Also, we we'll fast forward a couple of years, and you guys make that dream run in two thousand and two. Mm. Um, end up being minor premierships. Before we delve into that, in two thousand and one, the year before, could you see anything like that brewing up in the in the sheds or in the club itself? Um, probably I don't know. Not not at the start of the year, but then you know, as the as the year went on, yeah, 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 definitely the uh, the belief started coming in, and also I think we. Um, the coach was new, um, pretty much the whole setup, mm. even the organisation. So, and I think it was there was something brewing up, mm. um, and then we found out probably at the end of that that was the first time the club made a, a final, mm. uh, or you know a top eight. So it was you know it was definitely an achievement, uh, especially from where how far we came from in two thousand. We had um, the the club went into bankruptcy, mm. so. Um, yeah, pretty much started from scratch, new new owner. So no, um, yeah. At the end of it, it's funny because that year, that when the new owner came, he started chucking money at us, eh? like because I think he must have thought, nah, these guys won't win. <laughs> Obviously, with the new owner, I didn't really believe you guys would have made the finals. Or yeah, I don't know. I think it was his way of trying to um, yeah, yeah. incentives eh? see if we can um, you know work harder I guess for it. But mm. yeah, it worked. We ended up having a hundred grand at the end of the year, so shit. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, and so you guys, um, yeah, I remember that placed eight there, mm. and then you guys got smashed from uh, Paramount. Para- yeah, 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 I remember that because oh, fuck, you guys started pretty mean too. Yeah, and then like Paramount got the ball and just nah, they were too and, good, man. Yeah, I think they. Yeah, I'm sure they. they what are the year? I, 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 I'm sure they were not far from in the finals, I guess. Yeah, not they. They were in the finals there with Newcastle. That was the one, yeah. Newcastle, uh, yeah, Joey yeah. Johns like just put pro yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they, they were the favourites. Because they were, I know Parramatta were minor. Yeah, they were minor, and, and I thought like, they were gonna win it, man. But then they, shucks, last hurdle, we. Yeah. Nah, man. Oh, bro, and that's that's the Andrew Johns for you, bro. You can't like deny a heart of a champion, bro. Mm. Um, cool. So you fast forward onto two thousand and two, and. Like during that off season, was there anything you guys did different that, like you know, would breed like a like the run that you guys went on that year? Yeah, it was just yeah, new, um, just a fresh start, new coaching. Um, you know, our, our coach was Daniel Anderson, and he was bringing up trying to implement his new style, and I think it worked because he he's um, real tactical, real hard at into his skills, and so he pretty much took it all all the way to the basics, mm. catch and pass. 
um, you know, everything that you think that, you know, was, was pretty much, um, you know, bread and butter for us. Mm. Um, so, yeah, and that's how we kicked it off. And so, you know, we, and then kind of, um, and it was all about playing hard, but also um, outsmarting the opposition, yeah, you yeah. know, and um, changing, you know, a, a few things to suit different teams, I guess. And I think the work, you know, worked to our strengths. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, the talent that we had, um, raw talent from, you know, uh, New Zealand, you know, from Auckland, New Zealand, or around New Zealand. Yeah. I think that was massive too, so yeah. Yeah, you guys had some key figures as well from Australia that came over as mm. well, eh? Kevin Campion. Yeah, yes. but Ivan Cleary. Ivan Cleary. Um, yep. I had quite a few Aussies that came over. John Carlo. Yeah. Um, PJ are? Marsh. PJ Marsh. Yeah, man. Yeah, Mark Tukey. Yeah, bro. You got Villa, Villa Santi. Yeah. Oh, is he, oh, is he from Oz? He's from Australia, yeah, yeah. But he's gone, eh? Yeah, he's got a little ah. bit, yeah, but he wasn't, um, he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't brought up by his time, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, bro, oh, bro, that guy short of doom, bro. <laughs> yeah, beastie. Eh? Yeah. Oh, no, me, so you guys have a mean as, go through a mean as run through 2002, end up claiming minor premiership. What was it like uh, being in that environment? Like, obviously, going from just experiencing reaching the finals to, you know, topping, uh, topping the ladder. What was that like? Yeah, you know, um, it, was, uh, it was massive for the club. Massive for the team, um, you know, great achievement. Never been never done be, uh, been done before by uh, by any of the the teams that you know that um, put on the jerseys before. So now it was massive. Um, I think it was just a you know it was a, it was a funny year for us because you remember where um, that that was a year where the Bulldogs they were on fire. Oh yes, yes, and their yes. points got taken oh, off. So yeah, yep. so I was just you know things just kind of. Um, fell into our um, into our, you know into our hands. Um, you know things went. Um, there were some things that went went um, went our way. But man, all credit to the Bulldogs, uh, the informed team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, the our heavenly father was watching over us. Because <laughs> <laughs> were you guys like um, close second or no? They were they were way ahead of everyone. Nah, way ahead, man. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember they like had a, like. Uh, I think they, even if they would have lost like three games, they would have still won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those off. Even more. Yeah, no, they had a stacked ass team. Um, mm. Oh, no, sweet, man. And then you guys uh, obviously make a run in the finals. And um, I remember you guys beat... Who did you guys beat along the way? I know you guys beat Sharks yeah. in the... Yeah, Canberra, Sharks. Canberra, Sharks. And then, yeah. And then... Oh, it was Canberra, two. was it Canberra, someone else, and then Sharks? Or not? Nah, it was Canberra. And then, 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 then the Sharks, because yeah. you had a rest. Ah, mm. yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. that's right, for placing first there. Yeah. And the Canberra game was pretty, it was a home game as well. It was a home game, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, was, that was a pretty good, that was a good game. That was a one where Stacey got a drop kick or? No, that was the one to, nah, to, yeah, to we, win the minor premiership. Yeah. yeah, I think so, yeah. So we, um, yeah, I think they won the game pretty comfortably. Yeah, yeah. But it was just a, um, a full house and. Yeah, atmosphere was awesome yeah mm. so nah all good and then obviously I don't I still to this day that's I think it's happened quite a few times with the Warriors where like they've had to play like semi-final 40s away from home mate eh? yeah like, what is that's just the way that you, that's just the know, way it is because eh? yeah. it's oh, okay. it's an Australian company <laughs> yeah fair enough yeah. and then you have to play the final away yeah yeah so um, you know you're kind of out of your um, your normal routine yeah but it is what it is. Yeah, you have to do that. Yeah, footy player, right? Mm. Um, and then you guys obviously um, knock over the Sharks um, and then you guys um, stumble, unfortunately, against the Roosters. Mm. Leading up to the grand final, what what was the buzz like around that camp for you guys? When, like, for yourself, what was that like for you? Yeah, just probably like everyone else. We were just, you know, it was... Um, we were riding that wave, you know, everyone was um, just enjoying the, I don't know, you know, probably thought, you know, it was a success for the club. Yeah. Um, and, you know, never been to a grand final before, so we were just on a high. Yeah. Uh, thinking back now, you know, there was probably some things that could have changed, but yeah. um, overall, man, you know, we were just, um, yeah, thankful and um, definitely... It was just a surreal moment, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, oh, 
Oh, yeah, man. I, yeah, the, I, I was, I was, uh, like, because I was a Hearty Warriors fan back then. And, <laughs> and I was gutted you guys lost as well, man, because, yeah, I think the run that you guys went on, I would have had to take in a, uh, like, a legendary team like the Roosters to, like, you know, stop all this. Like, there was just non-stop magic for you guys as well. And, um, well, what, what was the, the feeling like after you guys had, like, lost? Was it? Yeah, you know, it was like, it was like everything else, eh? When you lose a game, um, you know, you always, you know, you're pretty much um, down and, yeah. um, you know, everyone's just uh, exhausted also, but also, um, I don't know, um, just feeling that, um, um, that feeling of like, you know, you've come so close. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, we're so close, but you, you didn't, you, you know, uh, you didn't achieve it. But mm. nah, um, I think also we were the boys were just like, Shucks, we could have won, but mm. it was, you know, all credit to the Roosters was there. It was their game on the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think we were, uh, you know, we, I don't know, maybe we thought, we were confident going into the game, mm. but it was just one of those, was, uh, I think the, um, the, what do you call the whole, um, the whole grand final um, day kind of got to us, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they, uh, they made the most of it at the end, but no. Nah. Uh, wouldn't change anything. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that's, um, because with the Roosters as well, they would have had, like, a lot of players experience being in the mm. grand final as well, so they would have had that to their advantage, and obviously, um, some of their players, especially, what, their skipper, Brad Filler, he, he already had one under his belt as mm. well. Um, cool, so, like, with that year as well, like, he, um, obviously, the team didn't, um, seal the deal or um, achieve what they set out to achieve but um, looking back at it you probably had like you, that was your breakout and standout mm. year like you walked away with the second role of the year or Dally M award um, some of the people like I've written down like that you had to that you that just showed how much of a great season you had that you had to beat out was like yeah Fitzgibbon who was like goal kicking for mm. the roots as well yeah Gordon Tallis yeah Hindmarsh Ruben Wickey Tony Pulitua, Steve Kearney, along many of the other great second rowers uh, among your era. Um, from that year, what was like something like that stood out for you? Was there anything else that you did different um, in terms of off the field, on the field, that made you have that stellar season? Um, I think it was just, you know, you're, especially when you're in a team sport, mm. when everyone else is doing you know their part, I think everything your part just makes it easier for you. Mm. Um, and I think I was just lucky enough that um, the coach gave, you know, all of us the, you know, the the um, the freedom to express ourselves on the field. Yeah. And, and I think that's what we did. Mm. I think, yeah, um, just using our raw talent, I guess. And yeah. man, when you look around South Auckland or even Auckland alone or New Zealand, yeah. you see those guys, you know, kids out there just, um, they've got great footwork, great ball skills. So, yeah, it was just... You kind of use that um, whatever you had, yeah, and you you know use it to your best ability. But also with you know when you're um, enjoying yourself, you, you're playing better, yeah, and you know uh, it's a team sport. So if you're enjoying each other's company, it just makes it easier. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's a great um, answer. Awesome. Um, you you you've got that Delhi M award and like just to highlight some of the players that you and then in the team of the year you had like Steve Price who obviously uh, was captaining the Bulldogs at the mm. time and I went through that salary cap issue but he ended up coming over to the Warriors as well uh, Warriors great as well um, you got Joey Johns you got Steve Menz he's got Brad Fittler and you got Lockyer so like that's some of the the, the talent that of, mm. or some of the greats that you were like lined up with um, during that stellar season fast forward to 2003 you guys um, obviously uh, didn't top the table but you guys went on a pretty mm. uh, dream uh, finals run especially with the last couple of games during the season you guys ended up placing 6 that year I remember in their finals that was all like did you guys play the Bulldogs or there was a team there like you guys yeah uh, Penrith eh? we lost to Penrith yeah, in a, yeah, in a and series. they went on to win yeah yeah no 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 but like your your finals run because you just had to beat oh, someone yeah. that was placed third 
I think it was the dogs, eh? Yeah, and you guys are um, yeah. fast as many, like, probably yeah. like four or five tries. Five tries, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember that game because, yeah, he was on fire. And then, um, yeah, you guys lost to Penrith, but it was like, it was almost like similar team, eh? Like, he, they had, like, like some of the big boys, um, mm. uh, poly boys uh, in the middle, and then they had heaps of flair on the outside as well. Um, looking back on that season, or especially that game, was there anything? Because it was, it, was, it was tight right through to the last yeah. five minutes. Was there anything that you guys like should have addressed or should have like changed or anything? Or was it just like... I, I think it was just little, little moments, yeah. um, you know, mistakes from you know, um, individuals. You yeah. know, I, I remember making a couple, of, a couple of mistakes and led to try, so... Yeah, I was definitely wasn't, you know, I, I remember that year, um, I had quite a few injuries, so it wasn't really, yeah, it was, it was an up and down year for me, but in saying that, it was it was just a missed opportunity that in that yeah. sport, say, yeah. you you know, a door opens or an opportunity arises, you have to take it with two hands and make the most of it, and that's what they did, and, you know, all credit to them, you know, we had a uh, couple of brothers in there, you know, with yeah. the... Politours and also um, Ngalo Vao oh, wow, uh, Paul Fatuera. Yep. So yeah, it was good seeing the Kiwi brothers, even though in that sports, man, I um, team sports, I love playing team sports because yeah. you can hide behind your friends. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, yeah, it's just appreciating, you know, um, your opponents, I guess. And, yeah, man. And then if you see another brother, you know, doing well, so mm, in that sports, you yeah. want to lose. Nah, that's sick, man. And um, uh, so you... You guys have um, like a dream run, obviously making grand final, then semi final. Then you guys have your slump year in two thousand and four, um, and then that has the that results and obviously your shock exit from the Warriors as well as um, the coach being like fired or obviously resigning. I'm not too sure what the story was behind that one, but um, what what was that like a moment for you? Like um, obviously as a footy player, um, but as a were you a father then? No, no, no. no. So how, no. Was, how was that for you and your partner going through that time? Um, and at the same time, because um, you were beloved by Warriors, whether the team was doing... Yeah. Uh, sorry, the Warriors fan base, whether the team was doing well or not. What was that time like for you when... Um, yeah, it was funny because after the 2003, went away to the off-season, yeah. spent some time in um, Brisbane and Gold Coast. Yeah. And came back that if you want to go back to training, eh? Oh, yeah. So I was just going through, you know, um, I think it was a time in my life where I was like, nah, man, I've had enough. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then um, all that started happening, got injured, coming back, and then just battling that. Mm. And then, you know, I think it was it was a blessing in disguise for me when, you know, um, it was, you know, it was a bit of a um, miscommunication with the the CEO oh. which you know led from what led to my um departure but hey it's it was um at the end of the day it's that's business. Yeah yeah. Um yeah you know whatever the media they you know they could portray it way different but nah it was just business and um he saw it different and then I saw it you know I was just I wasn't there, I didn't really want to be there. Yeah yeah. But then that that led to me going over to the UK and then I was going to be there for six months and then I ended up being there for 12 years and yeah. so yeah it was God was good definitely good for, uh, for me nah all good um, nah yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it, was, it was definitely publicised and it was like I uh, understand that there was like a massive race as well for all the clubs to try and um, get your signature on board and um, I think that's probably one thing that oh, I'm not too sure I'm not, like a I'm not a cap player or anything, but that's one thing I guess most fan bases can appreciate. It was probably your loyalty, even though it felt like maybe at the time mm. the club wasn't being loyal to you, that you wouldn't sign with a Aussie team. Yeah. And that's one thing that I've always had mad respect for you. Um, because if you see it nowadays, you see a person getting chopped, he's finding the next rival team just yeah. so that he can get another game back at them. And like, I know maybe it's just a sign again, maybe of your upbringing and just your humility as a person that you would never want to go against your brothers that you, you know, grinded for, grinded for and um, obviously, you know, had all those hard sessions with and, you know, like obviously the last two years with where you guys, you know, made finals and semis. So uh, mad respect to you also. So, 
at the end of 2004, we fast forward and you're in England. Was that a bittersweet moment that you go from having obviously this turmoil um, mid season with the Warriors and then you end up winning it with Leeds? What mm. was that like for you? Yeah, it was just, uh, you know, I just went to the right team at the right, <laughs> right time, man. I did nothing, man. I pretty much just, they did everything and they um, welcomed me with open arms. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, different uh, culture, different country, but they were really, uh, really good. I, I kind of, we got along straight away with some with heaps of the players. Uh, we had a couple of brothers over there, uh, Willie Poaching, um, made it easier. And then some of the other boys like Joe Vangana, um, you got Les and Shani, um, David Solomona. So, yeah. Um, yeah, the list goes on. And it was just, you know, when you have brothers out there, out there that you're close with, it's just um, life away from home is easier. Yeah. Um, yeah, and footy's way, um, it's not in your face like over in New Zealand and Australia. Oh, okay. So it's mainly, if you're, if you're a soccer player, then you will, but we're far from it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was just really low key and uh, easy easy going for us. No, no, I see. So, um, what, what was that like for you emotionally, like, um, in terms of like winning, winning the championship, like obviously having to leave your home and your. Like obviously your team growing up supporting that, and then obviously wanting to win a one for them, and then winning one for Leeds. What was that like for you? No, it was good. Yeah. Um, you know, um, experiencing a different competition. Yeah. Um, they're different, great. They are way crazier fans over there. Yeah. Um, but also loyal fans. <laughs> <laughs> but man, I'm, I'm I um, you know, heaps of respect for fans that here in New Zealand, Australia too. But it's just the way they they are as fans. They, you're seeing the um, football, the soccer teams, yeah, bro. Green Street, and how they, yeah, and how they um, they support, and that's definitely how it's the same For supporters, and they go to the league games. Nice. So um, nah, it's just the way they are, man. They're really um, diehard fans for the, um, especially for their town teams mm. or their local teams, and so they, yeah. Nah, nah, that's sick. You um, what was it? Was there a massive culture shock or like um? What was it like adapting to obviously the new scenery, but as, as well the new culture, cultural surrounding? Just like growing up in I don't know the South Island, or you just spend a whole day in Rimuru. <laughs> so, oh yeah, nah. But yeah, no. Nah, oh, it's Leeds a fancy part of. No, nah, I'm just saying it's just you know it's um, dominated. You know, it's, yeah, it's all yeah. white area. You oh, know? fair enough. Yeah. So you, if you go in a country, and you, it's like you get thrown in um, in the middle of sheep. <laughs> <laughs> it was just sheep's and. You're the only, you're the only um, uh, different coloured person, so yeah. yeah. But nah, apart from that, it's they're really friendly people. Um, I think one thing is when you when you go to a country or a different country, you have to embrace the culture. Yeah. Um, you know, you can't always, you know, be that kind of person. Oh no, I can't do this. And so I think that was one thing that me and my wife did. She, um, she was more um, used to it because she lived in America. Um, for a while for your uncle so she's used to that I was more of a man I'm I'm definitely I was just born and raised in Otara so yeah. never left so after that yeah well, definitely a um, culture shock but it was a good one yeah yeah mm. nah man yeah, oh bro that's like of heaps of uh, heaps of us brothers like we just don't know how to act around a different environment where it's yeah. not uh, predominantly brown eh? but no nah, that's sicky to hear man and um, so you guys uh, you ended up being a a great great team because eh? like mm. you guys obviously lose the year after but you guys go on a three peat I believe yeah. from 2007 to 2009 mm. yeah and then I, and then I think they won it again in 2011 yeah yeah and then they and then they smashed and then they and then I left and then they smashed it again so I think they've yeah that that team some of them won it like six or seven times. Sharks. So crazy. yeah, it was just yeah it was one of those um, what do you call it? Th- th- they call it the golden years. Yeah 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 mm. yeah they got yeah oh, I think with them they had something similar to what the Storm had for like just the, the spine players yeah mm. are all the same nah, yeah and then just like people that come in are just good yeah, add yeah. additions to the squad. Um, w- what what was that like? Um, obviously, when you got to experience the three P, um, looking back at it now, like what was something that you could see in the championship culture that probably wasn't there at the Warriors when you were there? Um, it's yeah, it's a hard one. Eh? Like yeah. I, th- I think um, one thing that's that I probably can say about their team was 
Uh, most of those players that are the, the, in the lead team, they played from when they were young, young age. Oh, okay. so, uh, like you know, um, like played footy or played together. Yeah, played footy together. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, so yeah. they're like from um, you know, young, like say for example, like sixteen upwards. You know, so I think that's massive. You know, knowing um, how everyone plays. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So they yeah. just jowled together when they got to that level, and they just excelled. And it was one of those. They, they were that generation that was the new generation of Super League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they brought in their style, which was good too. And they, nah, they were just, some of those guys were amazing, eh? Yeah. Um, and they ended up, you know, once you win one or two, you get used to it. And winning's real, um, what is it, contagious, eh? Contagious, you you yeah. kind of, the experience just kind of, you, you kind of feed off the whole atmosphere. So, and that's what they did. Oh. So the players were, yeah, they kind of knew how to ride the, the wave and, make the most of the yeah of the opportunity nah thank you man and uh you guys uh i remember you were in england and you were part of that um kiwi squad that won that tri nation series it was probably the first time that they've won yeah. it and then actually beating the aussies as well in the final yeah that was the one that was coached by bluey mcclinton yeah, yeah yeah so that was a well um just seemed like everything was working well for you over there in, in the uk and um yeah. Most of us Kiwi-based uh, Warriors fans at the time were happy to see you um, share some um, success and some of the light uh, over there in England. Yeah. Um, what were the major differences in terms of um, like the player probably that you left when you left the Warriors compared to the player when you probably stepped into the Kiwis camp that year? Same thing, man. I, yeah. I was at the right place at the right time. Yeah. Um, you know. Oh, but from um, more like a personal level, like you as a player. Like, oh, as a player, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah you, you know, obviously, ex- through experience, you yeah. you kind of see things different, you know, yeah. um, as when you were young. Um, but that's why I always refer to uh, a team sport where you could not, you probably won't have the the you know the greatest you know game on that day, but yeah. you have like you know definitely on uh, twelve players on the field that could help you out. So. Um, yeah, that's what I always say. Yeah, God is good, man. Yeah, man. He put me in it. Yeah, so I think people don't really sometimes they don't really see that. Um, you can be in a team sport, but also, you know, like there'll be you know, guys. Ten players could play good, and the other three could have a right game, but still win. You know. Yeah. And I think that's what happened. I think, and, but you know, it was just. I think through the whole series, there was a buzz going on. You know, in their team, the camaraderie was real close. Um, and everyone kind of knew they, what they wanted, but also they believed in themselves, and they knew that um, that we could, you know, uh, do something uh, awesome or memorable. And yeah. I think for the country, so it was it was, um, it was a buzz because we beat them nil, and that was the first time. Yeah. Uh, in one in, in a game for itself, but in a final to nil Australia, uh, that was yeah, that was, that was something else. Yeah, man, you guys have a, you guys. I think that was. What's his name? Manu Vatsuve had a mean game. Mm, there, yeah. Kira, yeah. Yeah, and you guys had like a great forward pack as well. You guys mm. had like a good mixture of uh, veterans as well as upcoming mm. uh, young players as well. Um, now that's sick, you also have, um, w- uh, Just briefly, we briefly touched about like um, the winning culture that you had at Leeds. Like if you were to become like an owner now or a coach for one of the NRL teams or for any team well what are the what are some of the main components that you need to build a championship culture oh sorry no you're right um yeah I think it's you gotta have good people around your around the club yep um and I think you know um the culture has to be right you know um I don't know you know it, it, it depends on what you know what kind of culture you wanna build um for me I think it's um, definitely, you want to, you know, you want people around that that has good the same values as you, oh. uh, but also just, you know, are, are there for the right reasons, I guess. Um, but um, yeah, some of the probably one of the things that um, through those years was just being selfless. You know, um, yep. it's not your you're not doing your job for your you know to get all your accolades or whatever. You're doing it for the next guy, for the you know for your teammate. Oh. Um, and I think that was massive, mm. and just training hard. You know, you, you you make sure you came in and and you did your part because 
you're not going to do it, you're going to let your, you know, your, your mate or your teammate down. So it was having that, that selfless kind of attitude, whatever it takes to to get that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, and it was the, the culture around, like, everyone got, you know, got along, you know, no one was, was better than than the other person. Uh, there was no egos. Um, but you were just there to, you know, do your part, mm. know your role and do it, you know, do it to, to the best of your ability, I guess. No, thank you. And obviously you move on from Leeds and then you go to Wakefield. Wakefield. Yeah. Um, they were they already in, established in the Super Rugby? Uh, yeah, they're Super always, yeah, they're always, yeah. but yeah, they're always that, um, other, you know, the lower part yeah, of the, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was good, they had some, we had, it was a, it's like playing club over here, but it was, you know, it was good playing with some of the some of the boys from New Zealand. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah we had Motutoni. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, man. we had Vince Mellars, one of the, some of the other brothers. Um, who else? Isaac John. Oh, there was quite a few. There were Peter, uh, Peter Godine. Yeah, yeah. Nah, there was quite a few of the boys, which is, just makes it easier. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those clubs where they didn't have much. But their their fans are passionate. Oh, so yeah. It was like pretty much a um, just a real uh, real um, working class um, town. So nice. yeah. No, I think you. So come around to two thousand and fifteen. Obviously, there was a um, come full circle, and you mm. signed again with the Warriors. And I think I, for one, can say on behalf of everyone, everyone was optimistic that they'll oh, get to yeah, see you back yeah. on the field. Um, in the Warriors jersey, but I believe that was never your intention. It was yeah. more to come and pass on your knowledge. Yeah, it was. To, you know, if I did, that would be good, but that would be a bonus. But yeah, just uh, mainly kind of trying, um, yeah, pretty much what you said, but also just, I don't know if I was passing that knowledge or just mucking around with the boys, but yeah. yeah. No, it was good. Good, um, it was a good experience, but also, um, yeah, if there was anything that they needed to, you know, kind of know, Mm. Or wanted um, uh, you know, had questions, and then I could, you know, um, help them out. But also, it was you know, I think when I was young, I remember growing up, it was hard for us to speak, yep. you know, voice our opinions. And I think that was, I definitely try to tell them that that if there was something that you you wanted a voice, you know, you're you're part of the team and you're part of the club. So tell them, yeah. Yeah, sick you man, and. I think, like I said earlier, just your loyalty to the Warriors and the fact that you came back and never signed with anyone else. Because I'm pretty sure, like anyone would have taken up, uh, taken your signature if it was to play a mentorship role as well with any of the clubs in the NRL. Mm. To, so no, that was awesome that you came back and you fish, uh, officially retired as a Warrior as well. Mm. Um, that must have been massive for you and the family as well. What was that like when you um, decided to finally hang up the boots? Yeah, my wife was happy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, it was good. Um, especially doing it at home. Um, yeah, and just uh, do, do it with the club that you started with. So, Me? Um, no, it was, it was, you know, I was, I was happy and I was content. So, um, praise the Lord again, man. Yep. Nah, sick you. Awesome. Um, was there anything like set in place, like when you decided to retire, that you wanted to jump in straight away, like, or was it just you just wanted to take the time or space to? Just yeah, I always, you know, said to myself that I'll go back to, you know, uh, community. Yeah. Um, because when I was playing, I always heaps of my mates were youth workers, yeah, or um, did social service kind of uh, jobs. Mm. So I, I did, I dabbled in a bit of youth work. Um, it was. Not by choice, but it was it just kind of um, fell into place for me. Yeah, yeah. And I ended up staying there close to three years, two and a, two and a half to three years. So, and that was a good experience seeing, um, you know, how they work, and also, especially with the, um, you know, the crisis within our youth in yeah, New yeah. Zealand. And so you, yeah, um, saw another perspective, and and you really, um, what do you call? Um, Empathetic with, with some of our young ones, yep. especially the broken homes and mm. um, the upbringing. So, and it makes you really um, cherish, but also um, you're you're thankful for you know, your parents and um, what they did for you know for us. Yeah, growing up, man, hundred percent. Give me a second. 
Cool, Lucien. Well, fast forward on to obviously what you're doing um, at, at this present time. Um, and it's a great way to segue from what you were talking about, especially with youth work. So um, we briefly touched on it um, early on when we first um, greeted each other that you're doing work with um, in, uh, in Zirara. You're in Zirara. Zirara. Yeah. Yep. Um, and in working with uh, the youth. Um, what's that like and what does that in- involve? Yeah, so I, I work with the well-being and education space. Mm. As we, we all know, um, you know, the boys are uh, well looked after with, with their physical sides, but um, yeah, definitely, especially, um, you know, with the, the current climate um, and also some of the um, things that have happened over the years with our young ones, um, you know, taking their lives a few, especially through the pressures of life, but also in sports. Um, so you definitely need, um, you know, we they definitely need uh, guidelines with their mental health, but also their well-being because we feel well looked after up here. Then, um, you know, the the game is much more easy on the field. Um, so at, at the moment we coll- we're collaborating. Just this is a little part of our part of our um, our job is we are collaborating with um, the great friends from Levar. Nice. Um, and we're just shining the light on mental health around New Zealand, mm. especially our, our rugby league um, uh, regions and our clubs, um, and just kind of uh, normalising the conversation mm. uh, with our our kids, our, our parents, and everyone else. And this, um, you know, this mental health space is massive. There's so many people out there that are doing the great work. Mm. Had some friends from AOK with from Caroline and PT out there. They do an awesome job. Um, off their own back and they've been doing it for the last I don't know close to 15 or 20 years and yeah as we spoke about it before mental health or um, the suicide prevention um, sector is massive and you know it takes so many other organisations to um, counter this issue because it's massive eh? and the more the merrier I guess nice thank you man and uh, that mad mad reps to to you and the team um uh, it is like uh, I wouldn't say it's epidemic, but it is getting to a uh, point where it's like has to be taken far more seriously mm. than what it is at the moment. And like I know we're in the midst of COVID, and um, obviously different um, factors happening all around the world. But um, whenever someone does like you know um, go through that mental struggle and does choose to end their life, as unfortunate um, as it may be, like it is preventable. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't yeah. um, it doesn't take away the feeling of um, like um, I don't know like uh, I'd say like it hurts more because it feels so close to home and mm. whether you know them or not like because we're all polys and we're all um, raised to be around everyone and yeah. to be happy and stuff like that that you feel like um, yeah, it's, it's quite a, a fortunate situation but it's great to see the works uh, the, uh, the likes of yourself obviously you're such a inspiring person off the uh, on the field and it's awesome to see the work that you're doing off the field to continue to spread your light and inspire others as well in that way also um we'll quickly wrap up obviously um, i don't want to hold you on for um any longer we'll, we'll um talk more or we'll have some quick fire questions but i want to talk uh, and quickly touch um uh your your journey um obviously getting the 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 the, 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 the or the malo fear um Obviously, um, what was that like for you? What was that like for you and obviously your missus and the people that you did it with? Um, you got guard by Leo Figo? Yeah. Nice. What was that like? Oh, it was a crazy experience, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely um, test your character. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's one of those, as you'll probably know, you know, you'll probably, it might be the same for you. I think once you start, you, you have to finish it or probably couldn't go home and have the call with my parents <laughs> but nah yeah it was it's definitely good to have um, doing it with my wife um, she was the inspiration she wanted it so mm. nah it was good and also um, learning that, that part of the culture I never I never um, wasn't an interest to me mm. so I learned it and it was good you know it's it's, it's beautiful you know I probably was a bit of a um, a joker on you know while I was having it yeah uh, but no, nah, it was a good experience. Um, Emo or Leah Favor was, yeah, he was awesome. I think if, um, if I had, I don't know, if I probably wouldn't, if I wouldn't have it with anyone, anyone else. Mm. Uh, I think he was the right person for me. You know, yeah. I'm just speaking on my on, on my behalf. Mm. But um, yeah, it was it was a 
crazy but a good experience yeah that's sick because he, yeah bro he is he's a bit of a character mm. and the thing with him he's um both fluent and so yeah. in english so he he's um he's well educated and and um it's good to see him like yeah do something like that so mm. but yeah man like um how how long nah we because there was about seven of us so it took us about like two weeks or something it was like yeah, a succession yeah. But I love yours, man. Yours uh, is awesome. Thank you. So thank yeah. you. How was um? How how long were the sessions? Nah, my lo- my ones weren't that long, man. Yeah. So I was one of those chicken ones. Eh? <laughs> Once they did it, and then he goes, oh, well, humo. Yep. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so any little uh, opportunity, man, I was out. Yeah, yeah. My longest one was probably like twelve or thirteen hours. Thirteen hours. Something like that. Something. Damn. Yeah. Well uh, done, well done. Nah, but man, I was like, nah, man, we have to get it finished, bro. Yeah, 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 bro. My longest hour was four, nah. but that was because of the legs. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So we, I banged it out in like eight or nine sessions, but I was like, oh, that's smart, man. But it was like the the queue, man. Yeah. So it was like got there, done back out, then done the lower back and out, and then like it was just like it was like a like an operation, yeah. bro. So like. Yeah, so I did it all non-stop, but like, um, lucky enough, he had like a family file of lovey that he had to leave, so. Give you a break, eh? Yeah, gave me a break, but then it was probably the wrong thing as well, oh. because it was like, I was on a roll, and then it was like, just when I started getting used to the, yeah, the, the owl, the then it was like, oh man, having to, but then, oh bro, like, you know, that's all part of the journey, I guess, and, um, um, yeah, what was, what was, um, what was the worst for you, worst yeah, the part of The knees, the knees, yeah. the, oh. Probably the knees in the first part, you know, when you're on your on that pillow and yeah, the pillow yeah. turns into a rock. bloody rock, <laughs> and the guys push you in, you're like, man, I can't breathe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that um, just a probably you're uncomfortable. Eh? Yeah, but like that whole time you're <laughs> always uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, there, yeah, yeah. Nah. So yeah, but nah, shucks, wouldn't do it again. <laughs> nah, bro, never. Um, what were your main inspirations like during the whole session? Nah, it's my uh, my wife. Yeah, she's the one the main reason why she did it. But also, right. yeah, you're thinking about maybe to finish it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it wasn't really really my parents, but it was just I didn't want to be one of those guys. Eh? No, no, fair enough. But so, I, yeah. I think like it's it's the pressures of like not only social media, but like just the generation now. Like, like yeah, you don't want to once you yeah. start, you have to finish it, especially something when it comes. So like that's it's all way. Um how was it at the end when you got to celebrate and then No, I was yeah, it was good. I didn't, You yeah. don't drink, do you? Nah. You don't drink, yeah. So I, I, I didn't really celebrate yeah. I didn't really celebrate much. Yeah. But it was more um relieved because my I don't think my, my parents thought that I could do it. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Cause it's the I remember the first hit my mom was like, I was looking at you, I thought you were gonna take off. <laughs> Jump off and take off, so I was like trying to act real cool and yeah. but I was kicking my ass, but nah. Yeah, it was just, but I, I I couldn't believe it myself, man. So definitely it was God and and the family and friends that he supported, you know, all that kind of um, helps. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, that's who we are as, as as people. We, you know, we've grown up around, uh, you know, th- th- definitely so true. You know, it takes a village to uh, bring up, a, you know, a child. So mm. and that's that's part of it. Eh? And we you know we all kind of get together and help each other. No, sick, you sick. Um. Yeah, it wasn't until I saw the A5 story and I saw that you were on it and you, you, you were dancing. I was like, oh man, that's, that's pretty sick. Yeah. Um, that probably, yeah, that's a massive reason why I wanted to get you on board as well because it's yeah. like I asked about the journey and said that we can connect on in that way. But um, oh, I haven't mastered the dancing. I never yeah. danced it. So I told my wife, no, I'm not dancing anyway. <laughs> so I'm going you know, to hide it. So when I go over like stuff, just hide it just in case they're like, hey, do you say yeah, something? Take, take nah, shirt yeah, off, yeah. 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 Nah, fair enough, man. Um, do you ever like, um, do you ever catch yourself looking at it when you're like, oh, sorry. Yeah, you know, sometimes people. you, oh, you know, when you, yeah. you definitely have to, you, know, you can't miss it, eh? Yeah, oh, for me it was oh, like, it's um, me like, you can't see it at night, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> for me it was like, like the bathroom when I go like to yeah, the loo, yeah. bro, and I'm just like looking down, went, oh, shit. Yeah, 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 right. You're like, bro, I can't believe it told me. Exactly, so, yeah. bro. Exactly. There's times, yeah, exactly when I'm like, man. Like, I even, like, growing up, like, because um, one of my uncles was a kufunga and I used to watch it, and it was uh, so sore. Yeah. And I was like, I'll never do that, eh? But then, yeah, timing came to place and everything 
Was but that I up? could definitely say that I never did it. I would have did it in the old days, man. No. Now, no. Bro, my dad was telling me what they had to go through. and I was you got that going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father, yeah, man. Did he yeah. do with the pig's head yeah. or oh, pig's tooth? Teeth, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, because the llama was hot, eh? Yeah, they said they had to, like, yeah, <sighs> burn the ink to clean it and then do it at the same time. And then um, sharpen the tooth for there, eh? Yeah, for bro. breaks. No sterilization or That's why they're probably just bro. laughing. <laughs> yeah, bro. Because they were like, um, even because my dad was up, bro. even that's a story in itself. Like, I was happy as when like my family came in because we're not all just being home during the session. And we were just like, like just not a lot, but a little bit. Like, we was like, man, you guys are so lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back then we had to do this, and then I was like, man, that's not helping my face. <laughs> <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> but then I was like, oh yeah, no, because even um, I was mean because like um, the guys that did me, they they dad did my dad too or like helped out in the process yeah, yeah, yeah. so like they were like That's laughing a good story, at my, yeah. Yeah, they were laughing at my my dad's comments not knowing that like my dad had one and then yeah. it wasn't until they asked but my dad already knew their dad from ages ago as well oh, as the uncle wait. that was here in Otara so nah that was that was pretty sick even and uh, like obviously with you and your your partner well that's just a different type of connection altogether yeah. right? I don't know uh, yeah, I didn't sign up. No, I, didn't sign <laughs> up. I didn't sign up for that. Nah, nah, sick. It was nah. So we will we'll quickly wrap up with some quick fire questions. I always just um, that we always check at the end of the show. Um, uh, obviously, looking back at your uh, footy career now, what's probably your your most favourite memory? Um, probably you know seeing my family, my parents, um, and then my wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just seeing their faces and. Um, you know their support, I guess, and and then also the journey on the way. You know, um, making teams, representing your country, if not New Zealand or Samoa, yeah. um, and just the friends that you made on the way, and some of the the countries that you've you know visited. I guess yeah. that's I think that's the beauty of sports is um, not only the things that you achieve, but you know the things that you've experienced because you never you would never have the opportunity or the chance to do that without that. Yeah. So praise God for that vehicle giving not only myself but many of our other brothers and sisters um, through sports the opportunity to do that nice when you were living over in England for 16 years what was the what was the main food that you missed when you shucks it was funny because we uh, we went over there we didn't really eat much island food oh we did only on occasion with, when you're your what parents others, yeah. yeah but then when you go over there you started cooking galo, ringing up home. How do you do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, supper soy. So, man, there was heaps of island food over there because yeah. there was the Jamaican or West Indies. Um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, countries. And so that's how the galo comes over to England. Yeah. But it was nice galo too. So, yeah, just made island food, man. Yeah. It smashed, we smashed it out like, man, sometimes definitely like once or twice a week. A week. Mm. So, yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Thank you. Um, with the role that you're in now, um, or say like if you were to take up a managerial position within a club, how would you have addressed um, the Ali back then that came back from Brisbane or GC and, yeah. and like not wanting to play? How I know because most of the, like for, just from you briefly speaking about it, I feel like that's more of a mental thing. It's not mm. like a, a question of your loyalty or a question of your heart, yeah. but it's just more so like, like you said, you felt like you were done and then you went and played like a lost year's career over in England. Um, being in a position that you are now, just to recap the question, being in a position that you are now, or even a position of, um, say, if you're a coach or a manager for a squad, how would you have addressed? How mm. would you address the Ali back then? Yeah, I think um, obviously knowing them, make sure you you know you know the, the situation, yeah. um, and check up on them, yeah. see how they are, um, and then you know hopefully they can help them voice their um, their thoughts or their opinions to the coach. Yeah. Because sometimes um, when you do that, you know, when you when you do that, um, some of the communications, you can lose it. Because sometimes as, as a young one, you don't even know what to say. Eh? Yeah. So I think for me, it's just having that representation for the players, or especially Pacifica players, Maoli players, um, and then being the voice, being a better voice for them. Because as a manager, I feel that, you know, you should... Um, not only have the best interests of the club, but also have the best interests of the player. Yeah. Because um, the players are the um, most biggest asset for the play- for for their club. Eh? Mm. You know, if they don't play, 
they don't win, you know, then yeah. you um you know, no sponsorship, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, definitely um I think just have the players back. Oh, that's what I'll do, you know. Mm. Um and seeing how they you know, check in on them, see see how um I can help them whatever they can you know, they're going through. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, uh, communicate with the coaches and whoever needs to be, um, uh, you know, um, talk to so they know and then hopefully they can it'll be a better better outcome. Nah, sicky, that's awesome. Um, that's great words as well. I, I know that will help our younger generation as well coming through. Um, what's one quote that you're probably, or one quote or one word of advice that was shared with you at a young age that probably still sticks with you to now? Um... I oh, don't know, maybe respect goes a long way. Yeah. Because I think it's a big word and, um, you know, you respect each other. If you respect, you know, um, your parents, you know, your, I think your, um, your rep, um, them, you know, at the highest, I guess, wherever you go, you'll, you know, you'll show your, you know, your, you'll be that person that you, you know, that they'll be, they'll be happy of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think respect, I, I know, just being respectful for each other, but also, for yourself um, I think it goes a long way I guess ah, nice thank you and quick uh, with the last question here um, in three words can you just describe the journey that you've probably um, had so far and obviously playing your footy career um, here as well as over in England and then like just to the person that you are right now yep like what's some what's three words that probably best describe that journey so far um I don't know. Uh, definitely blessed. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. Um, and well, I don't know. Just um, yeah, happy. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, nice. I don't know if those are the right words, but yeah. No man, those are your words, and yeah. that's that's exactly what we're after, man. No, no thank you. So, um, again, thank you for coming on board. Um, it's been a pleasure to have you here share your knowledge with us as well as um for our audience um uh, again no man be sure to to make sure you watch those highlights you know? <laughs> if you don't know man then you're missing out man if, if you're always on about the offload uh, <laughs> there's this guy that created it but um no. uh, again also thank you for blessing us with your presence and sharing your knowledge and uh, again mad respect for the work that you're continuing uh continue to do off the field to help inspire as well as provide hope and um an outlet for our younger generation coming through the footy ranks just making sure that they're okay both mentally or uh, both physically as well as mentally so um again um all the best for you and your future endeavors to come um thank you again to um also aaron that came on and sponsored us with this uh gutter board be sure to jump on his page as well it's a uh, nice. little man um little man big world um be sure to jump on and sponsor him he's helping to bring all the kiwi classic games oh, back me. yeah so um yeah be sure to uh jump on there and um yeah support those and his endeavors as well so Again, thank you again, Us, and um, all the best. No, thanks, Sully and the team.